Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the second service. We've been enjoying uh, our time together this morning. Some of us come here rather early on Sunday morning, and we always come with a sense of anticipation. Looking forward to seeing all of you and worshiping together, and especially hearing from the Word and hearing what the Lord has to say to His people. Uh, because he's always ready to speak, and we need to have those ears to hear. Isn't that right? So this morning, we're going to begin our service the way we usually do, singing some praise and worship together, lifting our, our voices and our hearts in song and in uh, praise and worship to him. We are going to start with a new song. It will be new to you. Um, so hopefully that's okay, because I think you're going to uh, embrace the message of the song, and it's a good song to start our service. Because it says, open up the heavens, Lord. We want to hear from you. And uh, let, you know, let the floodgates open up like a mighty river. And, and let it flow in this place and flow in our hearts. So would you stand and we can begin together? And this is how this song goes. We waited for this day. We're gathered in your name. Calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire, will burn our hearts with truth. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens, we want to see.
My song joins the one that never ends because our God is alive and gives us every reason to live and to live a life abundant and free. Praise you, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness in our lives, Lord. <clears throat> we thank you, Lord, that you always come through. You always come through. You are the God who never changes. Speak to the hurting heart today, Lord.
Lord, we can put our faith and our trust completely in you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you, Lord. We lift up a song of praise. We lift up hearts that are drawn to you. We can't help but be drawn to you. You are such a wonderful God. Holy Spirit, you know how to draw us to yourself, and we gladly come. We thankfully come because we need you, Lord. We're going to go into a time of prayer, and we're going to open the, uh, the altars for you. If you need to come for any reason, please come now as we sing this next song together. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. I lay it all down again to hear you say. service we asked the question what is God doing what season are we in what is God doing and in this service 
I, I would ask the question, what's God doing? And, and I hear this Scripture. Just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so the Son also gives life to anyone He wants to. What's the Father doing? The Father, in fact, judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son so that all people will honor the Son just as they honor the Father. I assure you, Jesus said, anyone who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not come under judgment, but has passed from life to death, from death to life. I assure you, an hour is coming and is here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God. And those who hear will live. For just as the Father has life in, his, in Himself, so also He has granted the Son to have life in Himself. So what is the Father doing this morning? He's not judging. He's not judging. He's given judgment to the Son. Why is that an awesome thing for us? that the Father has given judgment to the Son because the Son worked, walked down on this earth. The Son wore skin and bones. The Son walked around and knew what it was like to be hungry, tired, thirsty, rejected, betrayed. Jesus knows all those feelings. So when you're suffering, He understands your suffering. He wants to give you life. He wants you to roll your burden on Him because He cares for you. Jesus cares and understands. The Father is not sitting in judgment over you today. He's saying, my Son will decide what's up with you. And what did the Son say He would do? I'll die for them. I'll die for them. I'll die so they can be free. He wants to give you freedom this morning. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for freedom. 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 In this place. Father, I pray in the name of Your Son, Jesus, who knows what it's like to feel betrayal, who knows what it's like to feel rejection, who knows what it's like to suffer. Lord, in His name, we pray for relief for tormented souls. Relief, Lord, for hurting people. Relief for sick people. Relief for people that are broken, even physically. Lord, these names that were submitted to us, suffering, Lord, You understand suffering. Even physical suffering you endured on the cross for us. You are an incredible Savior. You are an incredible attorney on our behalf. You're an incredible father, brother, friend, comforter. Lord, in Jesus' name, we pray for comfort for those here at the altar that are looking for comfort, for deliverance, for healing, for willpower, for those that are struggling. Lord, help them to make up their mind and serve You. Lord, we feel Your presence all day here. We thank You. Thank You, Father. Thank You. Thank You, Jesus you are touched with our sickness our infirmity it, 
it touches your heart, Lord. It's your desire for us to be healed and free. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Spirit, rain down. Rain down. Comforter and friend, we need your touch again. Thank you, Lord. I am strong when 
your shoulder, you raise me up more than I can be. You raise me up to more. Here we are in the middle of the summer, mid-July, and you're here in church, and I so appreciate that. It's a wonderful service thus far. Thank you, Frank, for singing and for all you worshipers and prayers. And I love it when people come to the altar for a special need and people gather around them, and that's family. It's, it's body ministry, the body of Christ ministering to one another. And I would rather be here than anywhere else today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I love services like this where the Lord just has His way and people respond without any uh, fear of being uh, talked about or ridiculed. They come with their needs and the body of Christ backs them up and stands behind them and lifts them. And uh, that's a blessing to me. Praise the Lord. I want to speak to you just, just for a little bit today. I titled my message, It's Good for What Ails You. <laughs> and um, back in the early days of our country, when the West was very young, they used to have medicine men that would go throughout the uh, uh, Back then, the preachers were circuit riders, and they rode horses from meeting to meeting. And the medicine men as well had their wagons, and they go from community to community, settlement to settlement, peddling their wares. And a lot of times, there was a little bottle of colored water that was a cure-all for whatever, whatever your problem. This little bottle of water would take care of that physical problem. And the pitch was, it's good... It's good for what ails you. And today I want to talk to you just for a few minutes about a far greater cure-all for what, what ails you today. It's an offer from the Lord that, that if we take advantage of it, 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 it's something we should offer to the world to, today as well. It's, a, it's an ointment, a salve. How many how remember salve? S-A-L-V-E. We had it at home in a black can. How many remember the old liniment salve? Are you all you too young to remember that? Huh? It was a cure-all. Get the salve. S-A-L-V-E. And uh, it was that. It was good for what ails you. Uh, and uh, whether it worked or not, I'm not sure. But today I want to offer you something that I believe will really, really benefit in your life and your family. When it's applied according to directions, it takes care of your spiritual need, your spiritual malady. It's a cure for sorrows and for sickness, for the gloom and despair that people are in today for the curse of sin for the lies of the devil he loves to lie to people you know he's the father of lies right you're aware of that you've been you've been attacked by him many times if you're a believer jesus responded to a threat one time he was threatened by herod mean old wicked herod threatened Jesus, and Jesus responded in a very unusual way, I thought, when I first read this and heard about it coming up in, in the church. He responded this way. By the way, Herod was, was the meanest man of his day, I believe. He had no heart for, for uh, compassion or love 
or anything else. When it came to the value of life, he was a wicked tyrant. And they came to Jesus and said, Jesus, you're on Herod's list. You better run for your life. Get out of town as soon as you can. Herod has a contract out on you. And Jesus sent a message back to Herod. I love what he said. He said, go tell that fox. Fox, in the, the Amplified Bible says, that sly, crafty, sulking, cowardly fox. Go tell that fox that I do cures. The name of Jesus and the power of that name is a medicine against sin. It's a cure-all for every sickness, both physical and spiritual. Jesus cures it. The Bible says in, in the prophets, His name is as ointment poured forth because it provides healing and forgiveness. Thank God you can lean on that name. Thank God when trouble comes and you need a touch spiritually and physically, you can call on the name of Jesus. I hope you take advantage of that. That's our privilege as a child of the King for healing and even more importantly than that maybe is for forgiveness and mercy. I'm not sure about you, but there are many times during the week <laughs> that I need mercy. I'm glad that mercy there is great and grace is free. And pardon there was multiplied to me, the songwriter said. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. That's my message today. Jesus does cures for healing and for forgiveness. There's one thing that I, I get weary of when I listen to the news, when I read articles. I get weary of the terrible wounds, the terrible devastation that are a result of sin. We're in a sin-cursed world. Sin tears lives to shreds. Sin will take you farther than you want to go. And those who have been victims of sin have suffered severe <laughs> lacerations spiritually. To be set free from sin is an awesome, awesome thing. If you, don't, if you believe that, say amen. <laughs> Good. You don't have to be a preacher to see the results of sin. It's devastating. Many of us can relate to Romans chapter 7, seven verse 19. Let me read some of this from the Apostle Paul. This is the Apostle Paul writing, he said, For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, I practice. Now if I do what I will not to do, it's no longer I who does it, but sin that dwells in me. I find then a law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. I want to do right. I want to do good, but evil is present with me. I delight in the law of God, according to the inward man, but I see another law, in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity. It captures me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from the body of this death? Paul's saying it's like, it's like living death that captures me. And he cried out, who will deliver me? And then he gave this the answer. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord I have deliverance. Do you call on Him for deliverance when you're up against it? When you're tempted? When you're tested? When things are, are seemingly falling on you and coming against you? Do you trust Him? Cry out to Jesus. That's what Paul said. Who can deliver me? They're, they're, they just cry out for when we were kids, we used to hear often in church, plead the blood. Have you ever heard that, that phrase? Plead the blood. And when you plead the blood, there's no known limits 
no known limits to the power of the blood of Jesus. When Jesus reached down, he reached way down. Someone said one time, I think it was a song I heard, that he sits high, but he looks low. And he reaches way down to the worst among us. The name of Jesus is our only hope in this life and in the next. And I hope you appropriate that name more maybe than you do. Don't carry your own battles. Don't fight your own battles. But call on the name of Jesus. Of course, the important part is to develop a relationship with Him so that you can call on His name freely and gladly knowing that He recognizes your voice. But call on the name of Jesus. His name is our refuge concerning those who have gone away from us. I had the opportunity this week to participate in the funeral of D. Brown. I tell you one thing, I miss D. Brown. She came here for a long time and I remember the last place she used to sit was right over here and you could always look at her and get a smile. She just was a a bubbly, ready to meet Jesus, but ready to share Jesus with others. And her funeral was a celebration. D. Brown's homegoing. She had used, she had claimed Jesus as a refuge. And she claimed him to the point where everybody knew that D. Brown loved Jesus. And we attended her service this week. Those who have died and have gone home to be with Jesus. <laughs> There's an old song. I, don't, I never learned it. I, I know literally hundreds of songs. I, I have to learn this one. The, the line is, I wonder what they're doing there now. Do you ever think about that? Your loved ones have gone on to be with Jesus. I wonder what they're doing. Are they dancing? Are they smiling? Are they laughing? or the eating around the marriage supper, whatever it is, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, Paul said, the things that God has prepared for them that love him. So D. Brown today is rejoicing. I don't know if they can see us. If any of you are theologians and you know how to answer that, I don't know if they can, but I tell you one thing, her funeral was a celebration It was... It was beautiful. And uh, it was privileged to have known her. She had an outward profession of faith. If you don't know if a person has gone home and be with Jesus, it's, there's not, not a whole lot of comfort there if you're not sure. But with her, we were sure. She was, she was uh, administered the ointment poured forth. She, the oil of joy and gladness was part of her. And uh, there's comfort in that. And there's comfort in His name. Thank God for His comfort today. There's an old hymn that says, there's a wideness in God's mercy. A wideness. I don't know what picture in your mind comes to your mind, but there's a wideness in God's mercy. In other words, there's no limit to His mercy. His mercy endures forever. I read a story from a pastor. It was, a, it was an, an article that I read in a church periodical. He had several sons, and all of them, this is back in World War II, were in the, in the military. All of his sons. And they were all Christians, except one. One had never made a public profession. Never had given any indication that he knew the Lord personally. And that's a burden to a parent. If you have a lost son or daughter, loved one, it's a heavy burden, really. When you, if you take time to think about it, meditate on it, am I going to see them in heaven? Do we have an eternal destination together? All of his sons had made public professions except one. 
and his parents, mom and dad, were always praying for him. You know, don't ever underestimate the power of mom and dad's prayer. I think in my mind, and I have a, uh, I'm not even sure what the word would be, but a, a picture mind. I, I can picture things. And I, and I think about the prodigal son. His father, I believe, I could be wrong, but the way I read it, the Bible says his father saw him coming a long way off and ran to meet him. And in my mind, I can see the parents at supper time. Dishes are cleaned up now and they're sitting, enjoying the evening and Dad says to Mom, I sure miss our boy. I sure miss him, but can't wait to... I, I just hope he would come back home. He left under bad circumstances. I long to see him again. And in my mind, I could see them sitting there on the porch. They had other children as well, but the other children were home and in the fold and and serving the Lord. And then they saw coming down the road this familiar form. Dirty. Dirty clothes. Ripped clothes. Needing a shave. Smelling like the hog pen. And they saw him coming. And I believe it wasn't an accident. I believe that every night mom and dad would sit there, look down the road, longing for him to come home. This, this father that I'm talking to you about today, the parents were anxious for the soul of their son. Their other sons were saved, but he, was, he wasn't. He was in serving the country in France. And they were anxious. And one day, a letter came from somewhere in France. It's a true story. The artillery company that he had been part of had come under intense enemy firepower. Steel and lead crushed them down, pinned them down. Soldiers were being killed on all sides. Seemed like no one could possibly escape. And they got the message about that, while, while how serious the battle was. And this young man was laying there under fire. He wasn't hit, he was under fire though. And all of a sudden, coming back through a, the memory of his mind, the, the movie picture of his mind coming back, he, he remembered all that he had learned as a child from mom and dad and from church. And it came to that, to him. And in a moment, the story goes that his eyes were opened and he responded and he yielded to the Lord there in the battlefield. And I've read stories like that many times of people that, that uh, came to Christ under serious conditions. This young man's life was saved and he wrote to his dad and said, Dad, you can rest easy. I know you've been praying for me for years. You can rest easy. You've been praying that I make it through. I have. I've responded to the Lord and I know if I don't ever come home, I'll meet you in heaven. He responded to his dad, his letter of, of testimony. Suppose he had never written that letter to his father. They would have never known that their son had been saved until they get to heaven. But he had. Praise God. So never give up praying for a lost loved one. Even if you don't know the if you have to wait till you get to heaven to know, 
It doesn't depend on our knowledge. It depends on his knowledge, his name. His name is a cure-all. His name brings comfort. His name brings mercy. It's as an ointment poured forth. What other name do you know that gives you the kind of hope that the name of Jesus gives you? There's joy in his name. Who can tell what the result of a kind word or a personal testimony can do? Think about that when you talk to friends. Let them know. If, if it's too overt to say, hey, I just want you to know Jesus loves you, just you let them know you're praying for them. You don't know how often an unsaved loved one read the letter you sent or was spoken to by a friend who knew Jesus. Only heaven knows the thousands that responded to the words from the Gideon Bible in a hotel. I respect the ministry of the Gideons. Are any of you Gideons here? Are you familiar with the Gideons? It's an awesome, awesome uh, outreach. Every hotel you stay in, uh, uh, unless it's the Mormon hotel. I remember one hotel in Hawaii. They had the Book of Mormon. They didn't have the Bible. But there's a Bible in that, in that room somewhere. Placed there by the Gideons. And only heaven will know how many millions have come to Christ through a Gideon Bible. And by the way, if you do stay in a hotel, get that Bible, open it up. I always do to Psalm 37, 4. And I put a mark there. I put a dollar there. <laughs> One time I didn't have a dollar, so I put a five. Maybe five people got saved. I don't know. But put, put something there to mark that spot of your favorite first. I always write, God loves you, pray, and I put Psalm 37, 4. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and He'll give you the desire of your heart. When I developed that thought from God several years ago, I do it every time, and I don't know how many people have read that, the, the maids, the workers. Same with the Gideons. Millions have come to Christ through someone giving them a Gideon New Testament, a Gideon Bible. So you don't know. Thousands for sure. It says his name is as ointment poured forth. It's like the old medicine man. It's good for what ails you. God's grace reaches farther than any reach in the universe. God's grace reaches the lost sinner that you're praying for. So please remember that and apply it. Paul's testimony is beautiful. He said, and it's an example of God's long reach. And you can read the, the scriptures that he refers to in 1 Corinthians and Ephesians. He calls himself the least of all the saints. And 1 Corinthians, I'm the least of all the apostles. And close to the time of his death, he wrote to Timothy, Christ Jesus came to the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. But he responded, or he was blessed by the ointment poured forth. And the name of Jesus is that ointment, that, that therapy. The name of Jesus brings deliverance and power and victory. No other name. The song says, Are you weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. And that's my message for you today. Man has developed substitutes, substitutes something else for the name of Jesus. It doesn't work. Substitute medicine doesn't work. You're told today by society, put your force, your, your trust in the force or energy or harmonic convergence and all that new age language in the stars and in nature. 
But you can't comfort hurting people with that stuff. The name of Jesus gives me comfort and peace that passes understanding. Why am I telling you this this morning? Because you're going to bump into somebody even today that might need encouragement. Don't back off. If the Spirit of God says speak to that person or give that person a dollar or love that person, be kind to them, do it. It's amazing the response that you'll get. I mean, sometimes, I'm, I'm not going to be dishonest here, sometimes you don't get a good response. But most of the time, you'll get an appreciation. You'll get a good response. Let me just give you a quick example of what I'm talking about. You might see somebody that looks dejected, despondent. Might be a waitress, might be a servant at the uh, somebody waiting on you in the in the grocery store. Be sensitive to that. Say, are you okay? You know, I, I pray all the time. Can you is there something you'd like me to pray for you about? I dare you to try that. There's something about it that is exi- exciting, exhilarating to know that you can pray for somebody. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but I know some of you have done that. And I've shared from this pulpit times when, when, when we've done that and it, it, it just, what a, a restaurant, a waitress, a, where they responded so beautifully with tears many times. Try this. You're going to go out to eat today maybe? I don't know. If you need any money, see Pastor Pete Hill. Did he leave already? <laughs> no, say to the waiter or the waitress, you know, we're going to pray for our food in just a moment. Is there anything we can pray for you about? I have done that quite a few times and have never been rejected, but I've seen tears and I've seen a good response. One lady said, one waitress, yes, she said, pray for me that I I have some peace in my life. What an awesome opportunity to lift up the name of Jesus. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be bashful. Be overt in your testimony and you'll find life is worth living and God will be pleased because it's like an ointment poured forth. A salve. A medicine. A sure cure. Science and philosophy don't cut it. But the name of Jesus gives me comfort and peace that passes understanding. When we lift His name in praise, you can, you can trust Him to, to lift your burdens. It is a soothing comfort. So today, I don't want to drag this out any longer. Not that we're dragging it out. I hope not anyway. But I want to remind you, His name is a soothing ointment to your soul. The old hymn, so I never, I don't think I ever sang this song in in our years of singing. And we did it many times in every service, every concert. We closed it. Two different songs we would choose. One was called Touching Jesus is all that really matters. Your life will never be the same. There's only one way to touch Him. Just believe. But the other one was, does Jesus care? I thought about this a lot this week because of doing a couple of the funerals and ministering to people who lost loved ones. Does Jesus care when I've said goodbye to the dearest on earth to me? When my sad heart aches till it nearly breaks, is it all to Him? Does He see? Oh yes, He cares. I know He cares. His heart is touched by my grief. The days are weary and the long nights dreary. 
I know my Savior cares. His name is a soothing ointment. You can't get that kind of feeling from anything else but the source. Jesus is the source. And you, you meet people every day. Many of them love darkness rather than light. But you let them know that you love the light. Whatever you're going through, Jesus sympathizes with you today. Jesus' friends forsook him. And you know how he responded? Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. No other name has the power to give you comfort and strength than the name of Jesus. So, my closing statement. Trust Him. Confide in Him. His name is a cure-all. It says, ointment poured forth. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Hallelujah. I would like us to close. Becky here or Darrell? I want to sing that Darrell. It's an Andre Crouch song, but just a simple lyric. Stand with me. Let's sing, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. For He has done great things. And He will do great things. And He's doing great things. Sing it.